This is video 22 in our series, Topics in Tensor Analysis. A uh, reminder, the uh, playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. Okay, um, in our previous videos, we've talked quite a bit about how vectors and tensors transform from one coordinate system to another coordinate system. In this video, we want to ask the question, if we have, say, a vector in one coordinate system, if we take its partial derivatives, those derivatives that we take, do they form a new type of tensor or a new type of vector? So let's say that we have just a uh, Cartesian set of axes, x1, x2, x3, x4, and so forth, and then there is a curvilinear set of axes, uh, y1, y2, y3, y4, and so forth. And we know how to transform from the Cartesian to the curvilinear coordinate systems. In the previous videos, we gave the specific example where we transform, say, from Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates. Or if we know what the spherical coordinates are, we know how to transform back to the Cartesian coordinates. And let's say in our Cartesian system that we have a vector. We'll call it Vx because we're in the we're in the X Cartesian system. Now let's suppose that our vector is a complicated one. Uh, let's say it looks something like this, where we have three times z to the nineteenth plus 8y to the 7th minus 31x to the 14th. And that's the i component. And then we have other complicated expressions for the j component and the k component. Well, we can take the partial derivatives of each of the components of the vector with respect to each one of the coordinate axes. Now here we're just in three dimensions three-dimensional space. So, for example, for the i-coordinate, we could take its derivative with respect to the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. We can do the same thing for the j-coordinate. We can do the same for the j-component. And we can do the same thing for the k-component of the vector. Take its derivatives with respect to the x-coordinate, the y-coordinate, and the z-coordinate. Now, in our more generalized system that we have kind of sketched out right here, let's say that here we have a Cartesian set of axes and we're in d-dimensional space. So our vector would have a d number of components and there would be a d number of coordinate axes. Then for each one of the components of the vector, We'll just denote a particular component with the letter R, we can take its derivative with respect to each one of the coordinate axes. Here we just give a general label S, where S can equal 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way on out to D. And same thing here. We can have one component, a second component, a third component, all the way on up to the D component of the vector just like we did here. I component, J component, K component. For each component, take the derivative with respect to a specific coordinate axis. And of course, that's what this means in our more general system. Well, when we take these derivatives, that's going to give us a d squared number of terms say that we have the first component of the vector, then we can take its derivative with respect to x1, x2, x3, all the way on out to xd. So that would give us then a d number of terms. Then do the same thing for the second component. That would give us 2d number of terms. And then keep doing that till we have done it for all the d number of components, that will give us then a d squared number of terms. And of course, each term itself is a 
partial derivative. Now, let's say we have the same vector that was in the Cartesian system, same physical entity is expressed over here in our curvilinear system. We call it Vy. Well, since this is a genuine vector, this will transform into, from the Cartesian system into our curvilinear system, it will transform into it with a specific pattern. What we discussed in the previous videos was covariant transformation and contravariant transformation. And let's say that here in the uh, uh, curvilinear system that we're going to be dealing with the covariant components of the vector. Well, the point is then, this is a genuine vector. This will transform into here, again, with a specific set of equations. Now, in Cartesian coordinates, the covariant components and the contravariant components of a vector or tensor are the same thing. So we just call them the components of the vector or the tensor when we're in Cartesian system. But here, we're working with covariant components, say, to take the partial derivatives over here. So, of course, those have a label as a subscript. So over here at our components, we'll also keep then the same label as a subscript just to be um, consistent in our labeling. But again, this then will transform here in, in the manner of covariant transformation because we're dealing here now with covariant components of our vector. So we'll give this a label here, a covariant label. Well, what about these derivatives that we make, these d squared number of derivatives? We have them here. And of course, we can take the same types of partial derivatives over here in the curvilinear system. And that will give us a d squared number of partial derivative terms. These partial derivatives that we make here and here, are they the components of a tensor? If they are, then this should transform into this identical or with the same pattern as to how a covariant tensor transforms. Again, we say covariant because we're working with the covariant components of the vector here, taking those derivatives. But we don't know whether this actually, we don't know whether these d squared number of terms here and here, we don't know whether they form the components of a tensor. So the question is, to put it in more mathematical terms, here is how a covariant tensor transforms. Here we're in the x-coordinate system, and we have its components of a second-order uh, tensor. Then here's that same second order tensor in the y coordinate system with its components. And this is how they transform. And again, we've talked about this general pattern in the previous videos. What it means is that here we're taking partial derivatives with respect to y. One partial derivative will have an m label. The other partial derivative will have an n label. Since there's subscripts here, they should appear in the denominator over here. Now here on this side, these had to then be repeated indexes. So we take partial derivatives with respect to x. One partial derivative will have the r label. The other partial derivative with respect to x will have the s label. And here they are, and they appear upstairs as they should, because if this is going to be the transformation of a covariant tensor, this has to be a repeated label. So it appears downstairs, upstairs, downstairs, upstairs. And again, that's the general pattern for how a covariant tensor transforms. Well, here, we want to take this out and put this in. And let's see, we can write that, say, like this. And 
Okay, this is just what we had over here. These components and these components, and indeed, do they transform like tensors? So we're asking ourselves, are these the components of tensors? These are the components of a tensor in the x-coordinate system. These are the components of a tensor in the y-coordinate system. That's how they transform. Well, if these are the components of a tensor in the x-coordinate system, these partial derivatives, then here are the partial derivatives in the y-coordinate system. And indeed, if they are the components of a tensor, they should transform according to this equation. But we don't know whether they whether these indeed are the components of a tensor here and here. So we don't know whether this equation is true. If it is valid, if it turns out that yes, this equation is true, then these would be the components of a tensor. So let's see if we can determine whether this equation is valid or not. Also notice here that these can cancel, so our equation is even a little bit simpler we would have the partial of xr with respect to ym. Then here it is the partial of this with respect to yn. And of course this is the same. Vmy partial of yn. But again, we still don't know whether this equation is true or not. But since this is a genuine vector, v y m, if we want to, we could write it like this. We could say, well, this is equal to where this is m, so this has to be partial of ym. Then we have v x with a repeated label, like this. This is how covariant vectors transform from the x-coordinate to the y-coordinate. So if we wanted to, here we're taking a partial derivative with respect to yn of this. We can substitute this into the expression. So let's try that. See what it gives us. We have the partial with respect to yn of vmy. That's this, which is this. So you have the partial of xr with respect to ym, v in the x system, and the rth component. And will that equal the right hand side here? Well, here, on this side of the equation, we are taking a derivative of a product. So let's hold this constant and then take this derivative. So that's going to give us the partial squared of xr with respect to yn, with respect to ym, and this stays constant, so we have b r in the x-coordinate system, plus, now we keep this constant, so the partial of xr 
with respect to ym. And now we take the derivative of this with respect to yn. So it gives us partial vx r with respect to yn. So that's the left-hand side of the equation, just simply by taking the derivative of this product. And does it equal the right-hand side? So we look and we see the right hand side has this term partial of xr with respect to ym partial of vxr with respect to yn and that's this term right here. But on the left side we also have this additional term. So clearly these are not equal so we go back up to the top which tells us this equation is not true. Therefore, these components that we form from taking the partial derivatives do not transform like a tensor. So, and the reason they don't is because we picked up this extra term over here on the left hand side. These are equal, but we have this extra term here. So, when you have a vector or a tensor, if you take its derivatives, then you do not form a tensor. And we encountered a similar um, situation in the previous video when we were working with the um, Christoffel symbol. We found that it does not transform from one system to another system the way that you would expect it to transform for a third order tensor what we had found was here would be a Christoffel symbol in the y-coordinate system here would be a Christoffel symbol in the x-coordinate system and if you ask how do they transform you get an equation like this well this part right here is fine if this didn't exist if that was gone Suppose that what suppose that this was not present. So here we would say, well, if this is a tensor, it has covariant and contravariant components. Here we're taking partials with respect to y. One would carry the i label, one would carry the j label. These are subscripts here. So if this is going to transform like a tensor on this side of the equation, they should be in the denominator, and they are partial y, i, and j. Here we're taking partial respect to y that has the k label. The k is a superscript. It should appear in the numerator. And over here it does. Now here, if this is really transforming like a tensor, pretend this isn't here, then over on this side, l, m, and n would have to be repeated indexes. We're taking partials with respect to x, one will carry the L label, one will carry the M label, one will carry the N label. Those that carry the L and M label, they're downstairs here, so they should be upstairs, and indeed they are. The one that carries the N label is upstairs, it should be downstairs if it's a proper repeated index, and indeed it is. So if this term wasn't present, then the Christoffel symbol would transform like a tensor but it doesn't because we picked up this extra term. And the same thing happens, same type of thing happens when we consider vectors or tensors if we take their derivatives and ask do they transform like a tensor and the answer is no because again we picked up an extra term. And why it happens like that, that's what we'll talk about in the next video and then that will lead us directly uh, into uh, covariant differentiation.
So come back and join us for that video and we'll continue along here with our discussion.